Burgers, like most Americans, was something that I grew up on. But as my childhood metabolism started to slowly diminish and I would order burgers out at a restaurant, well, they would take me down. <laughs> they would put me out for a few hours. And for me, it's not just important that the food tastes delicious. That is one piece of the puzzle. It's equally as important that I feel good after. That's the complete package that I'm looking for. So I kind of just ruled burgers out for a bit, thinking that they were just too decadent too rich that I couldn't handle them. But then over the last few years, I've started to focus a little bit more on sourcing certain ingredients, making these different burger elements from scratch. And I realized, well, I can make a really delicious decadent burger at home that doesn't make me feel like shit. So I can guarantee when most people are grilling up burgers, the last thing they're thinking about is making their own homemade buns. But for me as a pro home cook, that is the first place my mind goes because this right here, well, this is the foundation of everything. It's gonna hold in all that juiciness and by making homemade buns, we remove those preservatives and also increase the freshness, which is gonna completely alter your final product. So I'm gonna be whipping up my brioche bun recipe from my Ultimate Bread Handbook, which you can find below in the description. And it uses those classic brioche ingredients, the milk, the eggs, the butter, but it takes advantage of a tangzong, which is pre-cooked dough to increase the fluffiness of your final product. Products, a technique that comes from Japanese milk breads. So I mix all the ingredients together minus the butter because I find that for a small batch of buns, it's just easier to mix the butter in by hand. And it's gonna be a bit messy at first, but it's all about just working that dough, scraping it off, working that dough, scraping it off until things start to smooth out. So once you have that brioche dough, the rest is pretty standard. We're gonna let it double in size, form those into our bun shape, let those proof again for a few hours until they've gained a little volume, and then egg wash them, sesame seeds optional, into a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. One of the best ways to lighten up your burger or to create a burger that doesn't make you feel like shit is to source some really good ground beef or at least some decent beef. When you buy ground beef in a standard grocery store, they're telling you one thing and one thing only, the ratio of fat to meat. Now that's a good start, but you don't really know what they're grinding up to make that ground beef. So find a butcher that you trust, that you know sells quality meat, that makes a good ground beef product. But if you wanna take it a step further, hold on one second. Thank you KitchenAid for having this attachment right here which has been my new favorite toy. If you really wanna step up your burgers and know exactly what's in them, well, you gotta grind your own meat. Making your own ground beef is not rocket science. Pick any cut, throw it in a grinder, you're good to go. But the beauty is you can use these whole muscle cuts. You can see the ratio of fat to muscle. So right here, I've got some short rib loaded with connective tissue, intermuscular fat. This is a beautiful tri-tip, look at this thing. And then finally, I have a hunk of chuck right here, which is coming from the cow's shoulder, tougher cut, loaded with beefy flavor, great for ground beef. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly slice these into chunks that can fit into the grinder. And you wanna make sure everything is nice and cold so it grinds up well. Now, all these types of fat caps right here, you wanna keep those on. That's gonna increase that fat ratio in your burger grind. Boom, cubed meat. I got a ring mold here and I'll just fill that ring mold up with ground beef so I know my ratios. Pack that in, now I'll press that down. And with all that fat and moisture, these burgers will shrink by about 30%, so keep that in mind. Now just like a steak, since these are thick cut, heavy coating of salt, cracked pepper, flippy, salt, pepier and then onto a rack. Now you can grill these right up, but I'm gonna pop them in the fridge. Since there's air hitting every side, the salt and the dry air is really gonna start curing these burgers, giving you maximum crust intensity. 
Another fantastic way to freshen up your burger is homemade condiments. Just like with homemade bread, less preservatives, much fresher product, leading you to hopefully feeling better after you consume them. And the thing is, they're really simple. I have an entire video I put out recently on my favorite homemade condiments. Today, I'm gonna show you two really quick ones. The first one is a caramelized onion jam. And the beautiful thing about caramelized onion, all of the sugar you need is in this thing right here. You never have to add additional sugar to caramelized onions. We just have to unlock the sugar within so we can actually taste it. So onions in their raw form are made up of larger sugar molecules, which our tongue actually doesn't register as sweet. Now, when we cut these onions up, root to stem for the best results, we get a pan on a nice low heat, add in a little bit of lubrication so they don't burn. I'm gonna use a mixture of butter and some oil, and we toss in these onions that that's when the chemical change starts to happen. Add some salt to draw out the moisture of the onions. By applying heat to those larger complex sugar molecules, the bonds actually start to break apart, creating simple sugar molecules, which our tongue actually registers as sweet. So you'll have sweetness in those onions pretty quickly, but you do not wanna stop here. By continuing to cook those onions on a low heat, we're gonna melt down those simple sugar molecules into a caramel, hence the term caramelized onions. Now that is a scientific transformation. Now every burger needs a good sauce. I think an aioli, it's classic. You really can't go wrong with it and it's super, super simple to whip up. So simple that you could do it in two minutes. All it's gonna take you is one egg yolk. Whisk that up a little bit to get the action started. Now you're gonna emulsify in some type of neutral oil and the key is to do it in small, phases, just a little bit at a time or you will ruin your mayo. You cannot mess up this step. And as we continue that slow emulsification, well, you can see right here, some thickening will start to happen. And once it starts to show signs of thickness, you can be a little more aggressive with the oil, but just continuing to whisk and whisk until you get basically the amount of mayo that you want. For me, this was the perfect batch, but we're not done. We gotta turn this into a flavored aioli. Phase one, little bit of acidity. I'm using two capfuls of apple cider vinegar. Phase two, a little bit of salt. Phase three, a little bit of garlic, adding that nice aromatic pungency, a little bit of bite to our aioli. And then finally, some freshness, some chopped up parsley. Whisk that all together, boom, perfect burger sauce. So obviously we're dealing with a lot of fat so far. We've got fat in the bun, fat in the burger patty, and fat in the mayo. And one of the easiest ways to counterbalance all of that fat is with acidity. So what I'm gonna do is take this fresh ingredient right here, some Kirby cucumbers that I got at the farmer's market, and I'm gonna turn them into something extremely edible and delicious to put on this burger, which is a refrigerator pickle. One of the easiest things you can make. First, you gotta slice through those cucumbers. If you have a mandolin, it's gonna make your life a lot easier, but I don't mind the difference in thickness with the hand slicing. Now, these four Kirby cucumbers were just enough to fill one 32 ounce mason jar, and this is when you would add your additional aromatics. I added a clove of garlic and some spices listed right here, but flavor them however you want. You can add some spice, you can add some fresh herbs, totally up to you. Now here's the best trick. You're gonna take your white vinegar and pour it over your cucumbers. If you go up to about a third of the jar, they're gonna be a little less acidic. If you like them more acidic, go up to half of the jar and then fill up the remaining space in the jar with your water and then pour that liquid right into your pot so you know you're not wasting any pickling liquid. For this amount of pickles, I'm doing two tablespoons of sugar and one tablespoon of salt. And I'll bring that up to a boil until those ingredients are dissolved and then pour that boiling liquid back over the pickles, cap it off. Toss these babies in the refrigerator and they'll be good tomorrow. They'll be even better the next day as they marinate in that brine. So I just pulled these out of the refrigerator. Look at these. That cure on the salt, it really holds them together nice. That is a beautiful burger patty. So I'm gonna fry those up in a second, but the last thing I wanna talk about to really enhance your burger game is seasonality. Now most people think burgers are made in the summer because that's when you grill, which is one aspect of the game. But for me, the reason I make burgers in the summer, right here. 
seasonal ingredients. You're not getting good tomatoes outside of just a few months. Same thing here. We're using these super fresh cucumbers that are only seasonal for a few months. But a good tomato, that's gonna make or break your burger. So I'm just gonna take a few chunky slices. It'll will do the job. Come on. That is why I make burgers in the summer. these for probably just another minute on that side. Pop them with some cheese, do up this burger. That is goodness right there. It's almost a Tiny bit rare on the inside, but I'm totally fine with that. Because it's well sourced, I know exactly what meat is in there, obviously. I would rather have a little rare than an overcooked burger. Holy shit. Wow. The first thing that actually hits me is the flavor of that bun and the softness of the bun. The richness of the brioche dough comes through hard. Then you have the creaminess of that aioli, which is lovely, bouncing out that meaty burger. That burger is amazing and it's packed with flavor. It's actually dry aged meat, so you're tasting even a little more beefiness. Then we just have balance of toppings. Caramelized onion with the sweet, tangy, acidic quality, balancing everything out with the pickles, and then just the freshness of the tomato. It's funny, because I've been recipe testing for the last few weeks with this burger. Every time it has gotten just a little bit better, slight improvements, and this one is by far the best. And on top of flavor, I trust that I'll feel fine after eating this burger. I mean, it's not like eating a salad, but it's not gonna take me down because I focused on high quality ingredients and I made everything from scratch. So that's gonna do it. Like and subscribe. Check out this video right here if you want some more good summer recipes.